Hal Laboratories Air Fortress for the NES, first released in Japan in 87, and brought to both the US and Australia two years later. Max Clark, if you're watching this, this is for you, man. Before we start as usual, I'd like to take this opportunity and not only dedicate this to Max Clark, but also to Rob Hall, Josh Allen, Gideon Kaltoff, and their respective spouses of course, Carol, Beth, Dina, and Irina, no rhyme intended, Travis Alex from Providence, Rhode Island, Ian Bergeson and Katie Chrysler from Nashua, New Hampshire, along with their newborn Felix, Matt Lister and Becky Brooks from Dover, New Hampshire, Matt Michael and Sarah Rose Stone from Fryans and O'Neill's California, Deborah Fletcher from Watertown, Mike Tesla from Stoneham, Carrie Forbes from Quincy, the Disaster Peace Theater Committee, Arson Alton Mack, Moore, Dunn, Sambito, Hawkeye and Vidal, the Boston Open Screen Committee, Huey Van Voorhees and Atwood, Sidestep Complex composed of Danny and Liz Shields, and finally Erica Jones and Monique Avila from Scott TV, that's Somerville Community Access Television, and Big, Brooklyn Interactive Group, respectively. With those out of our system, onto the storyline. Being much more than your typical quote unquote galactic future lore, it's on the planet of Farmel, whose inhabitants have broken deep ground with their latest space travel technology, the Lightship. However, their civilization's future is at stake, thanks as a whole to the egregious actions of the titular, massive, life deteriorating fleet of air fortresses. Thus, the Federation of Intergalactic Powers took it upon themselves to send out their most experienced and able bodied defense armada, which, in the process, was annihilated in no time flat by the colossal unmatched firepower of that very same fortress fleet. When all seemed lost, however, a lone capable soldier was dispatched to once and for all approach, infiltrate, and eventually vaporize the shit out of all eight fortresses. Enter Hal Bailman, identification code number 82592, named after this game's developer, as if it's not obvious enough, hailing from that very same Federation, no less, as he'll stop at cock all to fulfill his most ultimate, arduous operation ever assigned. I mean, shit, even Buzz Lightyear's a goddamn pre-kindergartner compared to this bamf of a space guardian. Shifting our attention to the gameplay framework, and by now it should be goddamn obvious, it's what I like to dub as Gradius and Metroid's newborn infant, and that there's two portions to each Air Fortress infiltration. The first revolves around approaching the base of said fortresses via HAL's lightship as you're wiping out each and every space entity, most of which contain random spacecraft armadas, cubes with pink cores, metallic polygonal panels, attack ships, etc., with its only main blaster deployed via A and B, and obtaining extra energy worth an extra 100 hit points for the next portion, and crash beam cells worth every 10, hence the letters E and B respectively, within your path, along with cells containing instant screen nukes and temporary invincibility, hence a cross and a dot center diamond, respectively. As is the case with every shmup, your lightship will be totaled should you have to collide into any hostile parties or careen into any asteroid or landscape areas. Therefore, survival is a huge, huge must. Oh, and before I forget, in the original Japanese version, your ass is sent back to the beginning of the entry point, regardless of how many lives you've got remaining. But thankfully, and thank god, it's not the case here or in the Australian counterpart. Maybe. Upon docking near your target air fortress base, this is where not only the second portion of your mission kicks in, but it's also where the epic and enthralling aspects, not to mention the main overall meat of this very game, transpire. You're then given way more control and leeway here, as you're not only given the ability to navigate at will, but also to deploy two different weapons, that very same main blaster from earlier, and your all-new crash beams, via A and B respectively, the latter of which is mandatory proving the most crucial confrontations. Within each interior fortress area, there's more out-of-control defense systems, relentless-as-fuck adversaries, and perilous-ass hazards of which to be extremely goddamn wary, attack droids, wall turrets, mutant butterflies, motion-detecting zappers, red and later pink alien astronaut doppelgangers, red amoebic lifeforms, giant attack mechs, and the like, laced with impenetrable spiral cylinders, magnet-powered prongs, disturbable walls of rock, pink slime left behind by said amoebic lifeforms, and no, not the kind from Ghostbusters 2, in fact, much more nastier than that. Honestly, I could go on for hours and hours and never zone out. Concerning the energy system, aside from acquiring more cells of course, whenever you migrate or float around inside the fortress interiors and or deploy your weapons, your main energy reserve depletes and eventually regenerates to full. The only exception is when Bailman exposes himself to any damage from hostile parties and or interior threats. Should you happen to progress further within the fortress areas, there's two types of reactors you have to decimate the hell out of. One miniature subreactor that retorts with a flurry of red and white ore projectiles, though later fortresses can and may contain two or more, with the other being the colossal main reactor, serving absolutely no threat whatsoever. Take out the latter type, and the entire structure powers down, thus going into an emergency self-destruct phase, again, like Metroid. At which point, who the shit could have guessed? Hall asks for your escape light ship, after which the next infiltration mission ensues, and then rinse, lather, repeat. However, if you're expecting this myriad of missions to be somewhere within Child's Play territory, not to be confused with the horror film franchise with Brad Dourif, think the hell again. This game is like an uptight and impatient drill sergeant, worse than Apone from Aliens, Hartman from Full Metal Jacket, and Hulka from Stripes combined. On the latter, rest in peace, War Notes, and I shit you not, we'll do more than stomp your guts out. It'll tear out your arteries and bones, and not only have them set on fire for 15 hours non-stop while shoving the ladder so far up your ass, you'll barely be able to sit for three and a half weeks! Hence the limelight on our usual upcoming subject, of course. 
Although your main astronaut Marauder doesn't have enough to work with in terms of weaponry, Bailman still handles himself well thanks to the Toy RC remote responsive controls, with little to no sipbacks as many might expect, and of course the straightforward, if at times plotting, gameplay scheme going hand in hand with each other. Regarding Air Fortress's challenge, since it is yet another NES game we're dealing with, consider that's our keyword for this particular title, as you'll be faced with them depending on the magnitude of your in-game breakthroughs. While the first two fortress areas are no problem, the later ones will drive up a wall faster than a rundown dune buggy on autopilot, hence the multitude of adversaries and defenses, outside or within any of the fortress structures, to which I wholeheartedly suggest referring the fuck back. In addition, as you're undertaking your expeditions throughout each interior area, be sure to conserve each of the energy reserves and crash beams you've gathered up so far, as you'll need enough of the latter resource for all the main reactors, not to mention all the more resilient, hostile parties you'll oppose. We're looking at you again, doppelgangers and killer mechs. And to top it off, upon mutilating the piss out of every goddamn main reactor, you'll realize that your escape ship is located further and further and further away from your current position, in which case you'll have to rely on your own instincts and self-guidance to reach them. Cause let me tell you, if you spend way too long, the whole structure will eventually collapse, thus leaving your ass severely FUCKED, and rightly so. And don't expect any in-game continues either, with the exception of the convenient 4-digit passwords provided upon death, or as ever looked up online. Anyways, keep those and other handy dandy tips in mind, as they'll always stick with you for all time depending on how far you're willing to get. By today's standards, the game's graphics are really nothing special, well in the case of the fortress interiors that is, nor are they much to write home about, but everything else including the outer space background, the base exteriors, Bailman himself, both on his light ship and on foot alike, as well as the often raved about troop of hostile parties he encounters throughout, are quite unique for the time this was released. Bailman does sport something of a genuine flair to his in-game persona, notwithstanding his sphinx-like transformation while aboard his mini-vessel, and each of the corresponding scenic backdrops are quite unique to each other considering how flat they look and the underlying color palettes executed in between each operation. In terms of music and sound, orchestrated by Hideki Kanazashi under the regional aliases of Rodeo Kanagushi and Jumper Kanagushi, also of Lolo and Rollerball fame, cause goddammit HAL LABORATORY, the scores in this game are nothing short of heroic, rousing and all around monumental, in spite of their tendency to repeat themselves every phase, which can become dramatically, if not severely, plotting, my personal favorites being the stage intro, fortress interior, and post-infiltration escape themes. While the correlating sound effects are vigorous and convincing, they'll eventually AND dramatically get on your nerves in no time flat, ergo, be more than prepared to look the other godforsaken way. Replayability-wise, thanks to the two-tier gameplay aspect, combat attrition methods, and puzzle solving slash adventure features that it offers, I'm beyond certain that many, hell if few, might give Air Forces an honest pass, mostly due to the common downsides to which I've already alluded that dare not speak their name. But in the case of obscurity hunters like yours truly, why not a motherfucking full-on potential fighting chance instead? So, what's my final verdict on Air Fortress? It's a cinch, hell of a lot more, to realize why this certain title has been heinously overshadowed by most of HAL's other titles, which I'm in no position to disclose by the way, and to top it off, the majority of its competition at the time, I'm looking at you, Abadox by Milton Bradley and Natsume. Notwithstanding that, however, if you're on the hunt for a decent quality bargain bin shmup slash platformer hybrid like no other, there's no excuse not to warrant a spot in your NES library for the much polarized Air Fortress. Seriously, I get my ass out there and obtain this fucking title, and believe me, it might not have the same mind blowing qualities as its rival classics, but holy country fried cannolis does it come close. Until then, with that being said, this is the Hardcore Retro God proudly signing off, and if she's watching this, my dearest regards to Krista Connors from Chester, New York. <laughs>